Hello, massage nerds. So today I want to do the mus uh, the nervous system review. I'm going to do it in two parts because the nervous system is really long. So um, it's the most interesting. I really love the nervous system, but it is a little bit more complex and a little bit longer. There's a lot to say about the nervous system. You know, uh, it's our fastest system and it works in conjunction with the endocrine system. Interestingly enough, the uh, endocrine system is the slowest system because it secretes hormones you know, uh, slower and the uh, nervous system is really fast. Up to 268 miles per hour it can send a message or as slow as one mile an hour. Oh, somebody's on. I didn't even announce it. So <laughs> thank you and welcome, guys. Um, so anyway, today I'll do the part one. I'm going to separate it into two. Somebody else is on. Ah, <laughs> hi, Lita and Annie. Hello, good morning from, oh, good morning. Welcome. I'm going to be doing the nervous system review. So let's jump right on in. It's, <clears throat> it's really, you know, a uh, complex. So let's start with the anatomy, the physiology, and hopefully you guys will stick around. So we're going to be learning the structures, the physiologic processes, and uh, some of the basic organizations, okay? The type of cells, the neural structures, and their functions, their neuroglial, the neurons. I know it's a lot, so, okay. So homeostasis is the tendency of the body's internal environment to re, uh, remain relatively constant. And so what this means is that your body is always striving for balance. It's, uh, if you're too hot, then, you know, it turns on the thermostat inside of you to cool you off. So these impulses are electrical signals transmitted along the nerve cell. So neurology, neuro means nerve, ology means the study of. So I know I've said this through every system, you know, we've gone through like cardiology is the, you know, the study of the heart. Uh, neurology, the study of the nervous system. And you know, if you were to stretch out all your nerves, all the nervous system, it would stretch out to 90,000 miles, you know, I mean feet. So, I mean, that's a lot. That is really long a lot. So they're all over, you know, from our brain all the way down to our toes is how our body communicates. So the anatomy of the nervous system is the brain, the spinal cord, the cranial and spinal nerves, the sense organs, sense organs meaning your eyes, your nose, your, you know, be able to touch. So those are the sense organs. And the neurotransmitters. Neurotransmitters are chemicals that help, you know, to uh, send this, help the signals. The physiology of the nervous system is sensory input. It receives information it, uh, they're the receptor nerve cells sending impulses to the brain and the spinal cord and then your nervous system interprets it like uh, what do I need to do with this you know like let's say uh, you touch a hot stove well it's gonna send a message like do I re is it dangerous do I remove my hand or is it just warm you don't have to you know have the reflex too fast so it senses information from internal parts of your body and from external sources, and then it interprets it, and then it gives it a message. So that would be the motor output. After it receives the message, it decides what is it gonna do with that information. So that's the effector. It's effect of effecting it, the nerve cells sending impulses from the brain and spinal cord to the muscles or glands. So after it interprets it, then it's going to have a motor output as to what is it going to do with that information. And of course, the, another physiology is higher mental function and emotional responsiveness. You know, we're, everything we do, everything from dreaming to eating to digesting that hamburger you ate to writing to thinking to, you know, feel, sensing temperature, to visualization, to imagining, to watching a movie, to talking, to walking, everything comes from the nervous system. So 
respect and take care of your nervous system. Okay, so now we're going to talk about the central nervous system and the per it divides in two, just kind of like the axial skeleton. I don't know if you guys saw that axial skeleton review, but the axial skeleton, I mean the skeletal system divides in two, the axial skeleton and the peripheral. And so does the nervous system, you know, it also divides into two, the central nervous system and the, um, the peripheral. So the central nervous system consists of your brain, everything that's in the middle, your brain, your spinal cord, and your meninges, and the cerebrospinal fluid. And the spinal cord is protected by the spinal column. The spinal column are the bones, you know, like your seven cervical, 12 thoracic, five lumbar, and one sacrum, well, it's really five sacrum fuses to one and four coccyx fused into one. So the vertebral column protects the spinal cord. So uh, it, re oh, also the central nervous system interprets by sensing information and it issues an output, a motor response. The peripheral nervous system is in, it uh, consists of the cranial nerves that exit the brain and the spinal nerves that exit the spinal cord. So everything that's not in the central, in the, uh, in the spinal column, it's already exited because it's in the peripheral part that is your peripheral nervous system. It has two subsystems. The peripheral has two subsystems. subsystems. The somatic, which regulates your muscle and your uh, joints, which are voluntary. We think, you know, we think, uh, I'm, you know, I'm thinking right now, I want to take a drink of my tea. So, you know, that's somatic. I have control over that. Your autonomic, your autonomic nervous system, you don't have control over, you know, it's like it regulates the organs, the glands, the smooth muscle, and, and voluntary, and it has two subdivisions. And the autonomic means that it works without you thinking. You don't consciously think like, oh, I need to digest that hamburger, or I need to keep my heart rate at, a, you know, at uh, less than 60 beats per minute. Oh, you need to take a deep breath. and. When you're sleeping, you know, we sleep without even, I mean, we breathe without even thinking when we're asleep. So the autonomic means that it works automatically without you willing it to, to work, which is great because can you imagine? We couldn't keep up. We could not keep up with telling our body what to do constantly. So that's why the autonomic system keeps us alive, right? And the autonomic system divides into two, the sympathetic and the parasympathetic. And we'll get more into that probably tomorrow. I mean, yeah, the next part too. Because the sympathetic is the one that it's your fight or flight. Like if you uh, perceive danger, if you think there's going to be something dangerous, it dilates your pupils, raises your heart rate, it puts you on alert. So it's your fight or flight. And the parasympathetic is your rest and digest. That's the more relaxing one and digestion, you know, um, that's why they tell you, you know, don't be stressed out, you know, don't be eating, you know, having a, um, or watching a movie that's going to get you or adrenaline going or something like that, because it does affect your digestion. You know, the, the, um, sympathetic system of slows down digestion. So parasympathetic, it stops, you know, all the uh, alertness, it slows it down, and it starts digestion, it slows down your breathing, so there's no danger. Parasympathetic means rest and digest, it doesn't perceive danger. And another thing I want to share with you guys is that your body does not know the difference of whether it's real danger or just perceived danger um, from a movie that you're watching, something that might be really scary, your body doesn't know if it's real or not real. It still reacts. So be careful. You know, this is why recently I stopped watching the news, guys, because it was just getting me too stressed out. It's like, I don't need that. I don't need to be bombarding my nervous system, you know, my sympathetic system constantly, because then your adrenals get involved and, you know, they release adrenaline. You're ready to fight and flight and there's really nothing going on. You're not even 
you're not even being chased by a tiger. So be careful because your body does not know the, the difference whether it's something that's real or not real. So it just reacts to your emotions. So, oh, well, this is how I want to show you. I hope you guys can see it. But this is to show you how it's kind of like the skeletal system. You know, like you have here in the middle, the green part. I don't know if you guys can see that that's kind of green. You know, your brain and your spinal cord is in the middle. And then your peripheral nervous system is everything that comes out, you know, on the, uh, on the outside. On the outside of the brain and the spinal cord. So that's the rest of it. So, that, so you can see that picture right there. And not, I didn't move my camera too well, so I can see the glare. Oops, just dropped my pen. So let's talk about the neuroglia. The ones that get all the attention all the time is the neurons. And you are born, you know, actually there's controversy now about are you born with all the neurons that you're ever going to have in your life. Uh, there's a little bit of controversy about that. So um, the, you, they don't... Re they they don't reproduce that is a given they don't they don't reproduce so we you are born with as many neurons as you're ever, you know that you're going to have however we have neuroglia that we have 10 times as much neuroglia and they don't get as much attention and they are you know they help with the connective tissue there's no impulse conduction. Really, the main ones are the neurons. They're the ones that send the messages. They're the ones with all the action. However, the neuroglia, or just glial cells, they are kind of like the ones that assist it. Just kind of like we have muscles that assist the agonist. We also have neuroglia cells in the brain and all over that, you know, help the neurons. They function by supporting it by nourishing the nervous system, protecting it. It, in the, it provides insulation. It uh, facilitates memory, cognition, emotion, pain regulation. So the glial cells in the central nervous system are the astrocyte, append appendidomocyte, micro microglia, and oligodendrocyte. Those are all in the central nervous system. And the ones, the glial cells in the peripheral nervous system are the Schwann cells and satellite cells. So, the myelin sheath is the fatty sheath around the axons. And axons can be really long. They can be up to three feet long, you know, three or four feet, like from the sacrum all the way down to your toe. So, um, nervous system cells are not like any other cells because they can be really long, you know, coming out of the uh, vertebrae, you know, and they, they have long extensions and we'll talk about that in a minute. So they don't look like your typical red blood cells or white blood cells. They're not small and cute, you know, they can be really long. So the myelin sheath is the fatty acid around the axons. They're made up of oligodendrocytes in the central nervous systems and made up of Schwann cells in the peripheral nervous system. Myelin is the substance, and these are test question guys for those that are you that are my students. The myelin is the substance in the sheath, increases conduction rate, and it insulates the neuron. The neurilemma, neurilemma is the outer layer of the myelin sheath. It's kind of like the sarcolemma, the neurilemma, sarco, it, you know, it comes from the sarcomere of the muscle. So neuro means nerve, so it's the layer of the myelin sheath of the peripheral nervous system. The nodes of Ranvier, I like that name, nodes of Ranvier, sounds like Italian or French or something like that. They're the little gaps. They're the little gaps. There's little spaces in between each axon, okay? Because um, So the gaps between the Schwann cells and their myelin sheaths. And I'll explain to you why those gaps are there. It increases the speed of the message being sent. So it speeds up the impulse. It jumps from one node to the next. And that's neurotransmitters are the ones that are being sent down to send a message. Okay. So um, the neuron now, it, uh, it's the impulse-conducing cell, is the simplest structural unit is the neuron. 
neurotransmitters are chemicals that's secreted by the neurons. That's how they send messages, neurotransmitters. I'm sure you guys have heard of the neurotransmitters, you know, that, uh, you know, that can cause you to be, you know, really high in a, in a good mood or, you know, low mood. So neurotransmitters are the chemicals secreted by the neurons. And there's three parts. It has a cell body, a dendrite, which are the feelers that, that pick up information. And then the axon is the long one that sends out, you know, it's the, that sends out the information. And the nerve fiber. So just like we had muscle fibers, we have nerve fibers. The uh, nerve fibers, the term used to dis describe dendrites and axons because they are thread-like. They're like threads and extensions. So the parts of the neuron are the cell body. Could, I think uh, um, there's a picture I want to show you guys. Maybe this will help you right here to see here is the neuron. So this is the cell body. This is where the nucleus is, okay, right here, the cell, nucleolus and the nucleus, okay? Here's the axon, it looks like a sausage. And see the nodes of Ronvier, the little gaps in between, okay? So the dendrites are the like the little feelers, like they're picking up information. What's going on? Is it too hot? Is it, you know, do you have pain? Whatever, they're picking up information either from internal organs, if... If this neuron is in your, let's say, your gut, it's going to pick up, you know, information, and then it takes it to the cell body, and then it, the, uh, the axon will take it either back to the brain, you know, we're going to talk about afferent and efferent right now, but this is what the neuron looks like, you know, and here's the neurilemma, the covering, here's the myelin right here. Here's the nucleus of the Schwann cell. So this is a peripheral uh, nerve. So as you can see, I just want to show you this is the body because it's in the middle. Here are the dendrites, which are feeling projections, and here's the axon. And here are the nodes of Ranvier, okay? So just wanted to show you guys so you guys can picture. And this axon, if the nerve, like let's say the sciatic nerve, which is your thickest nerve of the body, it can be about as thick as your pinky. That's the thickest nerve in your body is the, um, the sciatic nerve. So it can come out from your uh, L4, 5, and then down the sacrum, and it, can, and it goes down all the way to your, you know, to your heel. So this one can be three to four feet long, which, and, and it's a neuron. So neurons can be very long. So there you go. I just wanted to show you guys that picture. You know, to me, it helps to visualize, you know. Visualization is really good. Shoo, shoo, I just tripped with my shoes. Okay. So you have uh, structural classifications of a, of a neuron. You have unipolar, bipolar, multipolar. And it has to do with the processes, the feelers, you know, how many extensions does that neuron, uh, neuron have? Does it have one extension? Extension, a single process that would be unipolar. Remember, uni means one, like a unicycle means one wheel. Bipolar means it has two, so it's got two processes at the end, at the end of the body of the neuron. And if it has more than three, it's multipolar. So now we're going to talk about afferent and efferent. Think of the. Um, uh, think of think of the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system sending messages from the outside to the inside. It's a two-way freeway. That's how I like to think of it. Like it's a two-way freeway. It's got messages coming from the outside, you know, sending them back to the brain, and then the brain interprets it. And then there's a there's a effector, you know. So it's got to decide what it's going to do. So the ones that are afferent. Are, are also called sensory. They are sensing and sending messages to the brain. So afferent is sending, feeling, and receiving messages and sending it to the brain. And efferent from the central nervous system, also called motor neurons, they are sending the reaction back out. So, Afferent is from the peripheral nervous system 
to the brain, and then efferent is from the central nervous system sending the message back to, okay, what are we going to do? Are we going to move our hand? Are we going to, you know, uh, turn on the thermostat inside? Are we going to start perspiring because it's too hot? Or, you know, um, are we in a fight or flight mode? So we need to release more adrenaline. So think of the afferent and efferent as a two-way system receiving and sending messages from the brain, from the central nervous system to the outside. And I don't mean the, just the, to the extremities or to the internal organs, okay? They have, it's a two-way freeway receiving and sending information. And then you have your interneurons. Interneurons are in between the afferent and efferent neurons. They're also called associ association neurons. So they kind of help interpret the information. Like the reflex arc. Let's talk about the reflex arc. The reflex arc can bypass the central nervous system because um, let's say it's something very dangerous. Let's say you are burning. Let's say your house is on fire and you, start, you catch on fire. It's going to tell you to hurry up and get out of there or hurry up and remove your hand from the stove because it's on fire, you dummy. <laughs> Hi, somebody's saying hi to me. I appreciate you guys being on. So anyway, the reflex arc, it's a protective, involuntary, but predictable response to stimuli that uses ref uh, the reflex arc to ex exert its action. So it's a protective mechanism. The ref the I'm sorry, I'm not talking right today. My mouth is dry. So... Uh, the reflex arc is a single pathway to and from the central nervous system and it's the simplest functional unit. It consists of three uh, neuron patterns. It's the afferent, afferent receiving, the interneuron interpreting, and then the efferent sending back the message. And here's the reflex arc and when it's an emergency, it doesn't even go all the way to your brain. It just interprets it like let's say here's the pain provoking stimulus so it's felt by the afferent and the inter neuron interprets it like hey it's dangerous so it sends the message to the efferent and then you remove your finger so this is the simplest reflex arc it doesn't even go all the way to your uh, central nervous system to your brain because it's dangerous you just have a reflex kind of like when the doctor hits your knee you know and it just bounces it's just a reflex okay so this is the reflex arc so here's the pain provoking stimulus the interneuron interprets it and the efferent sends the and the efferent is the motor this is the sensory sensory neuron is sensing it's sensing it so these are the afferent afferent it's synonymous with uh with um, I'm sorry, my, my mind just went blank right now because I'm trying to think of the next thing I'm going to say. The afferent is the sensory also, and efferent is the motor, okay? So much to cover, guys. I get nervous. I get nervous doing this live, and it's like, oh, my mind's already thinking, okay, what am I going to say next? What am I going to say next? Okay, so just remember the, the layers, just like we had the layers of the muscle fibers, you know, the endoneurum, endo means inside, neurum meaning the nerve. So these are the nerve fibers surrounding the neurons. The perineurum, it surrounds the fascicles, just like, you know, it did in the, the peri means around the fascicles of the nerves. And the epineurum is the very top, epi means on top, so it, it surrounds the entire nerve cell. And you should, you guys, my students should already know what endo means, uh, peri and epi, because we studied that even in the muscular system. So here it is, I will show you. I wish, I, I like to, to, I wish I had more, I wish I was in the classroom, but anyway. So here you see, here's the axon, here's a Schwann cell. So if it's a Schwann cell, it tells you that it's uh, from the peripheral, not from the central nervous system. Here's the endonerium. It's surrounding, the endonerium is surrounding the nerve cell, just the nerve, the nerve fiber itself. Here's a fascicle. A lot of nerve cells got together and they formed a fascicle, okay? And that fascicle is surrounded by the perinerium. 
And then several fascicles, one, two, three fascicles put together makes up the nerve and the epineurium is the layer that covers all of it. And I know we had this, you know, from the muscular system too. So you can see how they cover the individual muscle fiber, the fascicle, and then the whole nerve. So the epi means on top. That's the, that's the most topical one of the coverings for the nerve cells. This is the best I can do for now, guys, since I'm not in the classroom. Okay, so an electrical signal transmitted along a neuron is a response to a stimulus. It events change electrical charges on neurons from resting state to an active state and back to resting state. Neurons transmit impulses to other neurons, to muscles and glands. So I brought, look, I have these examples. I, I'm going to try to kind of explain, you know, like resting potential is like you have a battery and it has a negative and a positive, you know. And these are smaller, so they send a smaller, you know, like if you touch it with your tongue, don't do that. But you know, I remember we used to, when we were little, we was like, we touch it, you know, and just, you know, uh, get it to feel a little shock. So you have your positive and your negative, and this also has a positive and a negative, but right now they're not active because, you know, they haven't received a stimulus. You don't, you know, they're just, it's a, they're potentially active they, they can be there's potential for these to be active but right now you know they're just not active right now because there's no messages that has been sent to these batteries but they have positive and negative and your nerve cells are the same way they have potential to do things they have a potential uh so the polarization is the resting state so their polarization is the batteries they're just resting okay there's there's no action happening and then you have the, uh, the inside is the negative charge and the outside is the positive charge. So then I'm sure from chemistry you guys have heard of the sodium potassium pump, which is the mechanism to, that maintain polarization, okay? That transports sodium and potassium, potassium ions in opposite directions in equal rates. So in other words, if two... Um, Sodiums come in, then two potassiums go out. Okay, so depolarization occurs when the neuron receives a stimulus. So let's say that now this battery's already received, uh, received the stimulus. So now it's being depolarized, causing the ion gates or membranes to open up. So sodium rushes in, causing polarity to reverse from negative to positive. And the impulse moves along the axon, that long axon, that long nerve, until the end. Um, and the, and then, then the, <clears throat> excuse me, and then the direction nerve reverses to send the, the message back. I hope you guys kind of understood what I was trying to say there. But, you know, depolarization is when they receive the action of what to do. And that has to do with the, act, with the sodium, you know, the uh, sodium potassium. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry, I got confused here. I confused myself because I got ahead. So um, let's talk about the all or none response. Once the impulse begins, once they receive the message, it sends it. That's the all or none. Once it receives the message, it's going to go. It's not going to stop. Okay? There's no fluctuations. You know, once you set, once you open up your faucet of water, even if you close the water, the water that's already dripped down, that's it. It's gone. It's gone. You, the water's already started. It's already flowed. It's already gone down the tube. Okay? It's the same way with this. You know, once the action began, that's it. You can't stop it. Even if you turn off the faucet, what's already turned on, it's already gone. So that's the all or none. Either go, either you're pregnant or you're not pregnant, guys. That's the best way I can describe that one. So repolarization is the neuron resumes a resting state after it's done the action, after it's been stimulated, after it's sent the message, and then it goes back to its resting state quickly via several mechanisms, including the sodium potassium pump. So neurons must be repolarized before conducting another impulse. 
In other words, uh, they need to get recharged again in order to send another, another impulse. The refractory period is the uh, period of repolarization and restoring the resting state. So, let's, okay. The synapse is the place where signals are transmitted through two neurons or between the, the neuron and the muscle. And I think, yeah, I, th I, I did talk about that, you know, uh, the little folds, how, it, you know, the, the, um, how, the, how they're separate. Oh, I think there's a picture. Let me show you. Instead of me trying to explain it, let me show you. So the synaptic transmission processes of transmitting signals, um, the impulses travel down the axon, reach the synaptic bulb, which is at the end of the axon, and then the neurotransmitter, which is the chemicals, are released. The neurotransmitters, transmitters travel across the synaptic gap the neurotransmitters attach to the binding sites on the postsynaptic neuron, and the neuro, neurotransmitter action does not persist. So it's uh, removed by enzymes or reuptake. Reuptake is the absorption of neurotransmitters by the presynaptic neuron. And I think this is better if I show you than read. I hate reading, you know, guys. I just I re I rather talk than just read. And I usually do break it up into two sessions with the students. But here's the axon transmitting the information, right? So this is the axon right here. Here's the synaptic gap. There's a little gap in between. These are the neurotransmitters being released. They're little green balls. Those are the neurotransmitters. They're the chemicals. And here's the membrane of the postsynaptic neuron right here, the binding site. So here, it's like a key. If it fits... It's going to open up and receive the neurotransmitter, okay? And certain neurotransmitters are for certain things, so they're different. You know, they can go through the bloodstream, and if they, are, if they, don't, if they don't have the right key, then they're not going to open. But this is the axon, and this would be like, let's say, the muscle. You know, it's going to affect your muscle. So there's a gap in between. The chemicals are released. There's a little gap, and then this is... These, then you have your sodium potassium pump where if you have two sodiums coming in, then two potassiums go out. So that's a little bit of you know how, how it works, how the neuron how the neuron works by sending chemical messengers. And those are the hormones too. Oh gosh, that's that's another complicated one, the endocrine system. That's next. So the central and peripheral nervous system breaks down into two, includes the brain, spinal cord, I already said this, right? Cranial, spinal nerves, and autonomic and systems and its divisions. Okay, so the central nervous system consists of the brain inside the skull and the spinal cord inside the vertebral column. So you have 12 cranial nerves, and we'll get more into that, I think, the next time because I'm almost done with this halfway. So the, you have 12 cranial nerves that come out of your uh, skull and then uh, 31 pairs of, uh, you know, of nerves that come out of the spinal cord and they are protected by your 33 vertebrae. Remember we have, you know, seven cervical, 12 thoracic, five lumbar, and then the sacrum. And then, um, so we have, and I don't, you know, uh, we have 33 vertebrae and 31 nerves and I think it's um, the reason the off is off is because the sacrum is considered one bone and the coccyx is considered one bone so anyway they are surrounded by meninges and the cerebral spinal fluid and the nerves come out on both sides that's why it's 31 pair of nerves because they come out on both sides of the vertebral column and they affect different things. And I, that's the part I really want to get to as massage therapists. That's the part I'm excited about. Talking about the, you know, the brachial plexus, and the cervical plexus, and the lumbosacral plexus, and how they branch off into different nerves. And, you know, like uh, I know one of the popular ones that we see as massage therapists is um, the sciatic nerve, you know, or people that they're, you know, they're, uh, or the thoracic outlet, you know, where the pec minor might be pinching you know, the, uh, one of the nerves. So those are the things that I really like to talk about. All this stuff is just to pass the emblems, I think. 
I, I shouldn't say that, guys. I shouldn't say that. It's important. It's all important. And some of us are more into it than others. <laughs> okay, the meninges. Meninges are membranes. I'm sure you guys have heard of meningitis. And remember, itis is inflammation of the meninges, which is a membrane that surround the brain and spinal cord. There's three layers. The pia matter is the inner layer attached to the brain, the spinal cord. The arachnoid matter, which is the middle layer, and the dura matter, which is the outermost, and it's the one that's against the skull. So think of the dura, dura means hard. So dura matter is the outermost layer, and it protects the skull and vertebral column. I'll show you guys again. So here, here you have it. Can you guys see that? You know, I wish somebody would tell me if you could see it or not. But anyway, uh, here's the meninges. You know, here's the brain. Here's the skull. So right here, you have the skull, that, the, the, you know, the, art, the, 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 the bony part. Then the dura matter. Dura means hard. Dura, like in Spanish. Those of you that speak Spanish, you know. So there's the dura matter. The arachnoid is in the middle. And the pia matter is, you know, uh, the deepest one. So they go from deep... Pia, arachnoid, and dura. And so these are layers of membranes. And when you, as a matter of fact, meningitis comes from getting, you can get it from getting bit by a mosquito. So they get swollen and they put a lot of pressure on your brain. So anyway, meningitis is inflammation of the meninges, which is those three layers I just showed you. So now you guys know. The cerebral spinal fluid is the clear colorless fluid surrounding the brain and the spinal cord, uh, spinal cord found in the subarachnoid space. The main functions of the cerebral spinal fluid are to cushion the brain, absorb shock, supplies tissues with oxygen and nutrients, and it removes waste during sleep. And this is the cranial sacral work. That's what they do. They work with the cerebral spinal fluid. Oh, let me see. I think I think this is as far as I want to go. Or let's talk a little bit. Let's talk a little bit more about the brain then, and then we'll stop because this is like seventy pages of the. Um, this is I tell you guys, this is a really long chap. This is the longest chapter actually. That's why I like to break it down because students lose attention, and I get tired of just reading the PowerPoint. But we'll talk about the brain. The organ serving as the central control center. The brain is where it, where it happens, right? Then you have your blood-brain barrier is the wall of connective tissue formed by astrocytes. Remember, those are in the central nervous system. Those, you know, astrocytes, the cells in the central nervous system, and blood vessels. And what this means is that we have a blood-brain bar barrier that protects our brain, like from certain medications that won't let in, you know, certain things that, you know, um, bacterial viruses, it tries to protect it. So the blood-brain barrier, uh, one of the things that it does is the capillaries are smaller so that it, not everything goes into our brain in, in order to protect it. So it's a protective mechanism that it protects it from um, having certain medications or bacteria or viruses going into your brain. So that's uh, something to protect us. The main regions are the cerebrum of the brain. The main regions of the brain are the cerebrum, diencephalon, cerebellum, and the brainstem. And cerebellum is nothing more than little brain. So the cere cerebrum is the biggest part of the brain. And I'll show you guys again. So here's the cerebrum. And the cerebellum is right here. So this is the little brain. So this is the cerebrum. It's the bigger part of it's the big brain. And then the cerebellum is the little brain. Okay. And here's the medulla oblongata. The medulla oblongata is the one that uh, controls your heart. And, you know, in, in martial arts, only because I started study Tai Chi, that if you even tickle the medulla oblongata with a feather, it can kill you, you know. As a matter of fact, martial artists used to aim, you know, uh, strikes to the medulla oblongata because, you know, it can knock, it, it can kill you. So anyway, so here's the cerebellum, here's the cerebrum, here's the medulla oblongata. And then in the next 
on the um, endocrine system, we're going to get into the glands, the pituitary gland, the thalamus, the hypothalamus, pineal. You know, these are all in here. So, uh, and the yellow, usually the spinal, the nerves are usually drawn or colored yellow in the books. So any anytime you see yellow, those are usually the, um, the spinal nerves, okay? Just like the blood vessels, the, the oxygenated blood vessels are colored red and deoxygenated blood vessels are blue. And then the, the, the nerves are colored yellow in the books. Just a little tip for those of you that are new students or haven't been in my class for, you know, those of you that are not in my class. So the cerebrum is the largest and most superior region of the brain. So you saw the cerebrum is the biggest part, right? You've got your cerebral cortex, the thin gray outer layer, contains the, the grooves, which, which are the sulci or sulci, and the elevated, okay, so the grooves are the valleys, and the elevated ridges are the gyri or gyri. You know, depending, tomato, tomato, depending on who's talking, whether you whether I'm talking here in, in America or you're in Europe, they pronounce it different. So, you know, the, the little folds that you see on the brain, so think of the sulci as the valleys, and the gyri are the top of that, you know, of the valley, the top part. So the corpus callosum, it joins the cerebral hemispheres. It joins the right and left hemispheres. Okay. The left hemisphere, so when you are very mathematically inclined, you think, you ration, you, um, you know, you're very intellectual, you're analytical, that's all coming from your left side of your brain. Your left side of your brain controls your right side of the body. That's why when people have strokes, you can tell which side of their head they had a stroke by which side they can't function. Like if they lost the use of the right arm, then you know that they had a stroke on the left side. And the right side of your hemisphere controls the left side of your body. And this is the more creative, the art, the emotional expression. People people like me <laughs> that are emotional, I wear my, my emotions on my sleeve. I'm very sensitive, you know, to other people. You know, I'm very, um, in tune with other people and I am very creative I like to paint or you know I like to do certain things to create you know art so in anything even with my plants or whatever so right hand right brain hemisphere are also musicians you know they're musicians they're very creative so the right part of your brain is that creative side and controls your left side of your of your um, of your body and we have cerebral lobes. We have your frontal, which would be right here. It, it matches the bones. If you know your skeletal system, this, the cerebral lobes match the skeletal system. Frontal would be your frontal. You know, parietal would be the two right here. You know, we have one frontal, two parietal. We have two temporal. You know, this is the temporal lobe. We have the occipital, you know, so in... And they uh, control different different parts. Like the frontal uh, is the frontal is for uh, motor output for the cognition, which is thinking and speech production. The parietal is for taste and um, for taste and somatosensory. The temporal is the olfactory, you know, close to the ears, and auditory and language production. And the occipital is for vision. I don't know if you guys have ever traveled or read a book for a long time or something, and you kind of rub the back of your neck because that's that's your occipital uh, lobe where you know it's the reflex to your eyes because from your eyes the visual goes to the back of your head. So anyway, you have the the five different lobes according to the five different um, parts of the brain. Okay. I think that's as far as we're going to go. Um, I, w I think I'll be back tomorrow and do the rest of it because I really want to talk about the parasympathetic and sympathetic. Those are two of my favorites, you know. So I, And it's important for us as massage therapists, and I want to talk about the brachial plexus and the cervical plexus and the thoracic and lumbar plexus. So I want to talk a little bit more, and, you know, it's too much in one session, so I'm going to break it up. So tomorrow we'll pick up where I left off today and we'll continue and 
I hope you guys enjoyed this. I know I talk too fast, and that's what gets me in trouble is that I, I start talking too fast. I want to get through it faster, and then sometimes my speech doesn't come out the way I want it to. But thank you for tuning in. I hope you guys come back tomorrow. Um, I, oh, I'm probably going to be a little bit earlier tomorrow. because. Um, so I'll start at 9.30. I'll start at 9.30 tomorrow instead of 10. And this is going to be saved for those of you that, you know, that, um, that had to leave and want to watch it again. Because it, really, it's all about repetition, 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 guys. So I enjoy doing this. I hadn't done a live video in quite a while. So I, uh, it was good. I appreciate you guys tuning in. I see some of you are still here. Oh, you want to say hi? Hi, Trey Porter. Great lesson. Thank you. Oh, Lisa, you're welcome. My pleasure. My pleasure. I hope you guys really do understand me and that I don't, I try not to talk too fast, but this is, this is how I am. So anyway, guys, I'll see you tomorrow. Till the next time, create a great day. Don't, so, don't forget to follow me, you know, on Instagram, subscribe to my YouTube, leave comments, leave questions. If you have comments or questions in regards to this lesson, leave them here and I'll, I'll answer them for you. Erica, oh, thank you. And Nico, thank you. Well, until the next time, guys, see you. Take care. Stay healthy. Stay strong.